My wife cheated with my best friends while on vacation. I accepted all her retribution offers, then divorced her. It's been over four years since this happened. I, Chuck, was 37 at the time and had been with my wife, Chrissy, 36, for 16 years, married for 13. We lived a comfortable upper middle class life and have a 15 year old daughter, Cora. I had two best friends that I had met in college, Eric and Mike. Eric, 35, was married to Emily, 31, and Mike, 35, had gotten divorced from his wife that spring. Through us, Chrissy and Emily had become best friends as well. As a group of three couples, we had been taking a week-long vacation every summer for a few years at this point. Everything was booked and ready when I broke my ankle three days before our flight date. I decided to not go on the trip as one, I was to be non-weight bearing for 16 weeks, two, my meds made me extremely tired and sleepy, and three, I just didn't want to be a burden to everyone else's fun. My wife offered to stay home with me, but I convinced her to not worry and go on the trip. When Chrissy returned from the trip, she seemed like a whole new person. She had been having a tough work year and the stress was high. I knew she needed a real break and was really glad she got it. On top of that, she was very affectionate and attentive upon return, almost to the point you'd call it love bombing. I was not complaining. Our sex life seemed like we were in our early 20s. I chalked it up to guilt over leaving me behind and just the overall rest from the trip itself. Fast forward to a couple weeks after Thanksgiving, all had been going well. Chrissy and Emily had planned a girl's shopping weekend a couple hours away with a hotel stay on Saturday night. Now here's where the situation goes to shit. We are all on Snapchat. Eric and Emily have a couple of nieces and started using it because it's the only way they can get them to message them back. I found that out myself when Cora got her first iPhone. Send a text, may as well be sending a smoke signal, send a snap, immediate response. We had group chats and would all send each other nonsense often enough. That night, after sending my wife a snap of the dog, I flipped to the map thing. There were the bitmojis of Chrissy and Emily and Mike. I zoomed way in and it appeared that they were all at the same place. This didn't make any sense. Why would Mike be in a town 2.5 hours away staying at the same hotel as Chrissy and Emily? My mind went immediately to the worst case scenario. I tried calling Chrissy at that point, but got no answer. I called again, then again. After the fourth call, I grabbed my keys and was about to start driving that way. Then I remembered I had a 15 year old at home and couldn't just take off at 830 at night to a town 2.5 hours away. I relaxed for a moment and began to think. Eric's wife was also there, maybe he knows something. I called Eric and he picked up. I told him about the snap map. It was weird though, because he didn't seem surprised or concerned, which momentarily relaxed me. Maybe I just missed something. That's when Eric verified my worst nightmares. He said, he knows they are all there. Emily and Mike finally convinced Chrissy to have another threesome with them. Another? WTF, I felt the room spin at that moment. My heart sank into my feet. I snapped to after a few moments and told Eric, you better fucking tell me everything right now. Eric sounding defeated said, I will. It started with a vacation back in July. The trip was basically five days after you subtract the travel days on the front and end of the trip. The first day was largely just a chill day around the pool at the Airbnb. It was day two when things started to happen. I knew a full outing had been planned that day. Without their spouses, Mike and Chrissy kind of naturally paired off, seeing as they were with a married couple. It all seemed innocent enough and just friendly. However, Eric noted they seemed to get more comfortable with each other as the day went on. That night was a pretty heavy drinking night with dinner back at the BNB. The drinking continued through dinner and after. Emily noticed how much flirtier and closer Chrissy and Mike were getting. After a while, Eric and Emily went to their room and left Mike and Chrissy alone. After about an hour, Emily decided to quietly venture out to see what became of them. She went by Chrissy's room only to find she wasn't there. She then crept up to Mike's room to hear the clear, distinct sounds of sex between two drunk people trying to keep it down. Emily came back to the room and told Eric what was going on. I interrupted him at this point and said, how could she just let this happen? You said she noticed them getting like this during dinner. Why didn't she pull Chrissy aside and intervene? Eric then coldly said, because we didn't want to. 
Apparently, Eric and Emily have been mulling over an open relationship. They had agreed if something happened on the trip, they would just let it happen. Eric admitted to me that he has always had a thing for my wife and thought this might be his opportunity, and it was. That was a kick in the teeth. I already had it verified that one close friend had betrayed me with my wife, and now here it was the other did too. I cussed him out, and he just took it, trying to apologize, trying to make excuses. I told him to shove that up his ass and just finish the story. The next morning, Emily went to talk to Chrissy about it. Chrissy had the expected guilt and extreme worry about being found out, especially since there were witnesses. She said it was a huge mistake, but also that it was really, really good, especially for drunk sex. Emily said, why stop? He just got divorced. You have been on edge because of work for a year now. We're on vacation and nothing came with you. Not your job, not Chuck, not Cora. You left your whole life behind. Consider it a free week. Eric and I won't say a thing and we'll cover if anything comes up. Chrissy liked the sound of it, but had apprehension. She went to talk to Mike and then Mike came to Eric asking if they were for real about letting this happen. Eric said, yes, just enjoy the week. In reality, he had his own scheme to sleep with my wife as well. Eric said over the next three days, they stuck to all the plans for the trip. I know this to be true because all the expected IG and Facebook posts went up. I kept getting included in the group snap from everyone and Chrissy would call twice a day to check in with intermittent texts throughout the day. I suspected absolutely nothing while back home recovering. Over those last three days, Mike and Chrissy basically acted like a newly dating couple. They made sure on outings that any pics slash posts slash snaps were innocent. Otherwise, they held nothing back in terms of touching or kissing while out. And whenever they got back to the BNB, it was almost always immediately to Mike's bed. They were not quiet about it. It was very evident what they were doing and for how long. Eric, wanting his chance with Chrissy, pressured Emily into proposing a swap on the final night. He isn't totally sure what was said, but no, she and all other parties agreed. I interjected and said, I don't need the details. Eric responded, you do actually, because it has to do with where she is now. On the final night, they swapped. Eric got to have Chrissy. However, he told me he was overly excited and it did not last very long at all. That's when she just got up, went back down the hall and joined the other two. Eric's pride was majorly hurt as he could hear them down the hall for what seemed like forever. In fact, Emily never returned to their bed that night. This was the first time he felt regret about initiating an open marriage with his wife. The next day they traveled back, all swearing to take it to their grave. Eric went on to say as soon as they got back from vacation, Emily, who had first been apprehensive, was dead set on the open relationship now. He still thought it would benefit him, even though he had grown some doubts. They landed on some ground rules. He wanted to have a list of people who were no-go, and she said no. This was about being open sexually, and they couldn't do that if people were off limits. It was going to be the same for both of them, so he should be fine with it. If he wanted to try and fuck her sister, he could, and she didn't want coworkers, exes, anyone off her list either. He agreed on the stipulation he knows everything and has access to everything. Neither of them liked the other's demands, but ended up agreeing to them. He told me they each made videos with the other, stating they were agreeing to this arrangement, so the other couldn't use it against them if they ever divorced. I was sitting there thinking, this guy is a total fucking idiot. Eric then let me know how awful this whole situation has gone, telling me Emily has been highly active while he has yet to manage a single date. As the months have crept on, it's only put a greater void between the two of them, and he said he already has divorce papers drawn up. At that point, he offered up all evidence he had. I accepted. Shortly after, there was a whole folder in my inbox. The vast majority of stuff was his wife with other men. Co-workers, randoms, she had been busy. But there were plenty of messages between Chrissy and Emily. I picked up that Emily and Mike had started a regular affair about four months earlier. About one month ago, the conversation of the threesome started. That whole time after the vacation, Chrissy had been really good to me and seemed much happier than before. In the beginning of the convo, she stuck to the idea that what happened on vacation was it. It was vacation from reality, 
and now it was over and life would just go on like normal. About two weeks ago, she started to show some interest at Emily's encouragement for a repeat of that final vacation day. This is when Mike entered the conversation too. Chrissy agrees at this point and the plan comes to be. In addition, Eric had photos of Chrissy and Mike kissing and a recording of him having sex with her. The son of a bitch had sneakily recorded it. Not the best quality vid, but he did manage to get a clear shot of her face and tattoo. I thanked him for the evidence. He tried to apologize again. Then I told him he was piece of shit and he better never contact me again. With the whole betrayal now out in the open, it was time to turn my attention back to my wife. Subscribe for part two.